talk about democracy being government of the people for the people, um, key to that is the people choosing their government. And one of the sort of dilemmas we've had, one of the challenges is that we've been in a situation where in 2019, nine elected parliamentarians were removed from parliament by a court order um, and replaced not by the vote of the people, but by another court order. Similarly, in this current time, we're also facing a situation which is challenging that trust, where the Auditor General, very key for fighting corruption, has been unconstitutionally suspended indefinitely. So you have... So it's a pleasure to be with everyone this morning, uh, and for some of you this afternoon and this evening, and uh, to introduce two distinguished leaders who will open today's session on bolstering democratic resilience. Uh, I'm Enrique Acevedo, a correspondent with 60 Minutes Plus and CBS News, and I'll be moderating the rest of our panel discussion on bolstering democratic resilience. For 15 consecutive years, the world has experienced a decline in global freedom and a recession in democracy. The COVID-19 pandemic made things worse by creating an environment ripe for exploitation by governments and non-state actors keen on consolidating power. In many countries, historical checks and balances have eroded, fostering the need for this robust reflection on how democracies endure and carry on in the face of the core challenges that threaten them. The global consensus, as we've seen in our conversations today, on democratic norms has shown signs of fraying in recent years with increased polarization, dissolution, and authoritarian patterns of governance, including in advanced Western democracies. How serious are the strains on democracy? And more importantly, what steps can be taken to reinvigorate democratic societies and institutions? We will explore how the rise of strongman states, internal and external conflict, rising inequity, polarization, and the COVID-19 pandemic challenge the future for more participatory models of government. Today, we'll learn from our panelists diverse experiences about what makes democracies more resilient. Thank you so much. And I'd like to um, also thank President Biden for giving me this opportunity to be um, part of this discourse today. Um, indeed, as a uh, elected official, a mayor of the capital city, we clearly have a role to play and had a role to play ongoing within the pandemic. And, and these concepts, these uh, tenets of, of um, democracy, particularly citizen participation, has really been a key part of how we've done this. The pandemic uh, happened within our ongoing context of rolling out a program called Hashtag Transform Freetown, a community-centered, inclusive approach over these three years. Um, and that accountability, that engagement served us well um, in terms of coming in and engaging residents with the specifics of what was going to be our contribution to the pandemic. Um, key to that uh, was you know, the fact that we have 35% of our residents in informal settlements um, and needing to understand in the absence of water, um, the space for social distancing, what could effectively be done. And we came up with some great initiatives um, which have which have really made an impact um, but when we talk about democracy we we, we we don't do it in a vacuum and that question of the social contract that trust which is so critical for how residents will respond how citizens will respond in a time of crisis is actually already planted in times prior to the crisis so in our context as we talk about democracy being government of the people for the people um, key to that is the people choosing their government. And one of the sort of dilemmas we've had, one of the challenges is that we've been in a situation where in 2019, nine elected parliamentarians were removed from parliament by a court order um, and replaced not by the vote of the people, but by another court order. Similarly, in this current time, we're also facing a situation which is challenging that trust where
where the Auditor General, very key for fighting corruption, has been unconstitutionally suspended indefinitely. So you have this sort of, you know, we, there's a need to work together, central governments, local governments. There's a need to ensure that democratic tenants are held um, strongly and that residents have the confidence and the trust, because if there's one thing that's key to fighting a pandemic, as we've seen all around the world, it's having that trust of residents. So when trust is, is eroded or, or, or challenged, it actually means that in a time of crisis, building that collective engagement, that belief, whether it's for taking the vaccines, accepting the truth of the virus, it makes it harder. So as um, President Biden said earlier in his opening remarks, democracy is not a state, it's an act. And our continued actions need to be leading us towards the direction of strengthening democracies. One last thing I just say is that we've seen on our continent a reversal for the first time in 15 years of good governance. This is not just about Sierra Leone, but it's about Africa. And in a country where 40% um, of our people are living before the, below the poverty line, democracy is not an option, it's a must. So we use the pandemic as a, as a lever to see what can be done, how democracy serves us. But we mustn't forget that democracy and the acts of democracy and the acts against democracy will take us either one way or the other. We must continue to, to invest in actions that strengthen democracy at all levels of government. Mayor Guy Sawyer, thank you. Mayor of Freetown in Sierra Leone, uh, with an emphasis on the fight against corruption, of course, uh, strengthening the rule of law and, and checks on government. Trust, that's a main theme in, in your participation. Thank you so much. Now we go to uh, Her Excellency Silvia Hernandez Sanchez. She's the president of the Legislative Assembly in Costa Rica. Bienvenida a esta conversación. Every so for any individual citizen incites, right, the population of this country as against the laws of this country, as against the lawful directives of the president, that's an infraction of the law, now lawlessness down there. And they down. flout the law from the beginning. No, but you're inciting no, 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 people. No, no, you're telling people not to take part of the process. We are not inciting. But you're telling people, see, not take part of the process. And in 